Hello again and welcome to another episode of Military English Made Easy and this week with uh, a little delay uh, we continue with uh, military um, basic uh, on commands, formations, uh, units and ranks. Uh, so this episode will be a bit longer. It is common, at least in the European and North American militaries, to refer to the building blocks of a military as commands, formations and units. In a military context, a command is a collection of units and formations under the control of a single officer. In general, it is an administrative and executive strategic headquarters which is responsible for the national government or the national military headquarters. It is not uncommon for a nation's services uh, to each consist of their own command, such as land component, air component, naval component. But this does not preclude the existence of commands which are not service-based. Formations are those military organizations which are formed from different speciality arms and services troop units to create a balanced combined combat force. Examples of formations include divisions, brigades, battalions, wings, etc. Formation may also refer to tactical formation, the physical arrangement or disposition of troops and weapons. A typical unit is a military organization that includes service personnel predominantly from a single arm of service or a branch of services and its administrative and command functions are self-contained. An unit subordinate to another unit is considered its subunit or minor unit. Other examples of units are divisions, brigades, battalions, etc. Military ranks are a system of hierarchical relationships in armed forces or other institutions organized along military lines. Uniforms usually denote the bearer's rank by particular insignia affixed to the uniforms. Ranking systems have been known for most of military history to be advantages for military operations, in particular with regards to logistics, command and coordination. As time continued and military operations became larger and more complex, military ranks increased and uh, ranking systems themselves became more complex. The military is comprised of three categories of rank commissioned officers, enlisted personnel and warrant officers. The uh, characteristics of commissioned officers. They generally have a minimum of a bachelor's degree. Additionally, advanced degrees are encouraged to continue to be promoted. Commissioned ranks are the highest in the military. These officers hold pre uh, presidential commissions. They do not specialize as much as enlisted personnel and warrant officers. As an, of as an officer moves up in rank, he or she gains more experience in different areas with the ultimate goal of taking command over more and more troops. The rank system forms the backbone of the army structure and it defines a soldier's or officer's role and degree of responsibility. Soldiers and officers have different rank systems. Broadly speaking, officers have more leadership duties. However, many officers start off as soldiers before gaining their commission. <coughs> officer cadet is the rank held during initial officer training at the military academy. Second lieutenant is the first rank held on commissioning. It is normally held for up to two years, during which time they complete special to arms training relevant to their corp. Afterwards, they are responsible for leading up to, 50, to 30 soldiers in a platoon or troop, both training and uh, on operations. Lieutenant is a rank typically held for up to three years. They normally command a platoon or troop of around 30 soldiers, but with experience come uh, increased responsibilities. They also have the opportunity to gain specialized skills outside their unit. Captains are normally made second in command or of a subunit of up to 120 soldiers. They are kept uh, they are key players in the planning and decision making process with tactical uh, responsibility for operations on the ground as well as equipment maintenance, logistics support and manpower. 
promotion to major follows between 8 to 10 years of service. Typically, a major will be given command of a subunit of up to 120 soldiers uh, and officers with responsibility for their training, welfare and administration both in camp and in operation, as well as the management of their equipment. Lieutenant colonels typically command units of up to 650 soldiers containing four or five subunits. They are responsible for the overall operational effectiveness of their unit in terms of military capability, welfare and general discipline. This is typically a two-year appointment. Colonels are not usually field commanders, typically they serve as staff officers between field commands and battalion brigade level. It is the lowest of the staff rank uh, and they are the principal operational advisors to senior officers. Brigadiers can command a brigade or be a director of operational capability groups such as a director of staff. Major generals command formations of division size and hold senior staff appointments in the Ministry of Defense and other headquarters. Lieutenant generals command formations of corps size and hold very senior staff appointments in the Ministry of Defense and other headquarters. Generals hold the most senior appointments, such as the Chief of Defense Staff, Vice Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of the General Staff, Deputy Supreme Allied Commander Europe and Commander-in-Chief Land Forces. The Characteristics of Enlisted Personnel Enlisted personnel are personnel below commissioned rank and, made, uh, and make up the vast majority of military personnel. They are known uh, by different names in different countries, such as other ranks in the United Kingdom. For a better understanding of the rank system and promotion possibilities, for example in the British Army structure, you can also see the webpage www.army.mod.uk slash structure. Enlisted ranks are uh, for those who enter the military without going through any formal officer training programs. The education may, uh, level may vary from right out high school to having a master's degree. Enlisted personnel progress through the ranks, their leadership responsibilities increase significantly. These responsibilities recognize formally by the use of the term non-commissioned officer or NCO in short. Enlisted personnel ranks. On completion of phase one training, all new soldiers start as privates, uh, although the title may be trooper, gunner, signaler, sapper, rifleman, depending on corps or regiment. Promoting to lance corporal may follow after phase two training or after about three years as a private. Lance corporals are required to supervise a small team of up to four soldiers. They also have opportunities to specialize and undertake specialist military training. After six to eight years, and depending on ability to lead, promotion to corporal typically follows. In this rank, additional trade and instructor, instructor qualifications can be gained. Corporals are given command of more soldiers and equipment such as tanks and guns. Sergeant is a senior role of responsibility, promotion to which typically takes place after 12 years depending of, on uh, ability. Sergeants typically are second in command of a troop or platoon of up to 35 soldiers with the important responsibility for advising and assisting junior officers. After a few years as a sergeant, promotion to either staff or color sergeant may follow. This is a senior role combining man and resource management of around 120 soldiers or even command of a troop or platoon. For a clear presentation of, an, of the enlisted army ranks in the United States Army, you can go to the webpage www.military.com slash army slash enlisted ranks. The NCOs Non-commissioned officers are enlisted personnel under the command of an officer granted uh, delegated authority to supervise other military members or assigned significant administrative responsibilities. A non-commissioned officer, sometimes spelled 
uh, non-commissioned officer abbreviated to NCO in British English or non-com in American English called a sub-officer in some countries is a military officer who does not have a high rank or who has not been given a commission. Non-commissioned officers usually obtain their position of authority by promotion from lower ranks. The NCO Corp usually includes all grades of sergeant and corporal. In some countries, warrant officers are all, uh, also carry out the duties of the NCOs. NCO training and education typically includes leadership and management, as well as a service-specific and combat training. Senior NCOs are regarded to be the primary, uh, primary link between enlisted personnel and the commissioned officers in a military organization. Their advice and guidance is particularly important for junior officers who begin their career. Most senior NCOs have more experience, possibly including combat, than junior officers. Thus, in many armies, junior officers are paired with senior NCOs uh, as advisors due to their title operational experience. Characteristics of warrant officers. Warrant officers are highly specialized experts in specific career fields. They are appointed by warrant. Their purpose is to provide knowledge and instruction in their primary speciality, for example, a geographic technician. Warrant officers do not focus on increased levels of command and staff duty positions like commissioned officers who are generalists. Warrant officer class 2, company or squadron sergeant major, is a senior management role focusing on the training, welfare and discipline of a company, squadron or battery of up to 120 soldiers. WO2s act as senior advisor to the major in command uh, of the subunit and may also be selected for a commission as an officer. Warrant Officer Class 1, Regimental Sergeant Major, is the most senior soldier rank in the Army, typically reached after 18 years of outstanding service. WO1s are the senior advisors of their unit's commanding officer with leadership, discipline and welfare responsibilities for up to 650 officers and soldiers and equipment. The British Army refers to the trainee officers as officer cadets who rank as private soldiers at the start of their training with no authority over other ranks except when appointed to carry out a role as part of training. Officer cadets are addressed to as Mr. or Miss until the completion of the early stages of the training. Thereafter, other ranks, non-officers, will address them as Sir or Ma'am. In the US and several other Western forces, officers in training are referred to as a student officer and carry the rank of cadet uh, of the Army and of the Air Force. These officers may be serving at a military academy or as member of a military training unit attached to a civilian college or university, such as an ROTC unit, common in the United States. This is due to the requirement that commissioned officers have at least a four-year degree. In the US, an alternative uh, to spending four years as a cadet is for college graduates with a four-year degree to attend Officer Candidate School, an intensive 12-week training course designed to convert college graduates into military for officers. Each service has at least one and usually several Officer Candidate Schools facilities. Students are these, uh, at these programs are called Officer Candidates. Appointment refers to the instrument by virtue of which the person exercises his or her authority. Officers are appointed by a royal commission in most monarchies or a presidential commission in many other countries. In the Commonwealth, warrant officers hold a royal or presidential warrant. In the United States, officers are appointed by the president with the advice and consent of the United States Senate. NCOs are appointed by an instrument of appointment, a written document, often a certificate, usually from the service head. Entry into service is often referred to as enlistment through the English-speaking world, when um, in some countries um, where soldiers do not technically enlist. 
Sometimes personnel serve uh, in an appointment which is higher than their actual rank. To check your understanding uh, on today's topic, um, answer yourselves these questions. What do commands, formations and units refer to? What are the military ranks? Uh, and at, uh, for the last uh, task, choose 8 to 10 unknown military terms from this text, text uh, and find their definitions. Uh, so for this week, uh, it's all from me. Uh, next, we'll be um, uh, reading out information on military weapons. Uh, have a nice week, have a nice weekend, stay in touch with English and uh, we'll hear ourselves uh, next week. See ya!